Hey y'all, Dog Beach here, and I hope you're having a great day. I wanted to go over some advanced settings for profiles with y'all today that you can use in the app. More specifically, I wanted to go over uh, zero height and zero offset, when to use them, and how they can really help you. So let's go ahead and do that. To do that, we're going to go to profiles. You can click profiles up here, or you can click it down in the bottom navigation menu. It doesn't really matter. We're going to go ahead and hit edit. Um, there's some new buttons here we've added recently. This button here sets the active profile. And then this little uh, button here, this one allows us to edit. So that sets active like that. Let's go ahead and hit the edit button here. And let's go ahead and go down to advanced settings. And let's talk about zero height and zero offset. So if you hit the information button next to zero height and zero offset, it's going to give you a detailed description on how to use it. It's a grid based system. Um, but let's also talk about when to use it. So you should always check these, these four inputs here. If you've got a weird firing solution, like it's just one mil high, or it's just always half a mil high, um, or you have a firing solution of all zeros. If you actually put zeros for these two inputs or somehow manage to get them to zero out, you're going to get zero for your firing solution because this is a correction factor. So it should be 1.0 if there's no correction at all to be made. And you should do a tall target test to find out the correction factor that you would input here if needed. Um, now for zero height and zero offset, Zero height and zero offset are used whenever your zero is not zero. A uh, couple cases, there's really four main reasons why that might happen. Um, one of them is because you have a rifle with a suppressor on it and you want to have a second profile for when you're shooting unsuppressed. When you take that suppressor off, you're going to have a point of impact shift. You should measure that shift based on the information icon here. We would measure where that shift is. And as you can see here, it's plus three, plus three. If that was our point of impact, then I would just input three and three. And hit done. So if I impacted here, I would input three and three like it says into those inputs. Um, so when we take our suppressor off, we're going to have a point of impact shift. And that is a good case scenario for having a adjusted profile. So what I would do then is I would go up here and I would put, I, I would mark this as um, minus S for non-suppressed. Okay. And I would notate this as a second profile. Another reason that we would use the zero height and zero offset is there are scopes out there. Um, one that comes to mind is a, a ZX-5 that has one third MOA clicks. There are even scopes. I've seen a EOTech that had a half MOA adjustment because uh, it was meant for CQB. There are scopes out there that you just can't center. For whatever reason, I can't, whenever I'm shooting, uh, if I were to adjust it one more click, it would go from here to here, and it just can't zero. You can use the zero height and zero offset in order to account for that. So that's another use scenario for zero height and zero offset. Um, Another use for zero height and zero offset is whenever I fire multiple ammunition out of one rifle. So let's say, uh, for the third scenario, let's say that I had a, let me find it here. Let's say I had a 300 blackout. So we're going to build a 300 blackout here real quick. Uh, Trishicon should have one. Let's see here. Do they? Yeah, they do right here. All right. So let's say that we're doing a 300 blackout here. We'll go here and we have two different rifles and this rifle is going to be my supersonic backup ammo because I normally hunt and use subsonic ammunition. So we'll go, since it's supersonic, we're going to shoot a lighter bullet. So we'll go with a 115 grain and a custom drag model. So now we have our 300 blackout super. So we do 300 100 B O and then I'll just do it like oh, this. All right, that tells me it's a 300 blackout supersonic. Um, 
So we would, this is our secondary profile, not our primary. So because it's supersonic, it's, it's going to hit higher than our subsonic ammo profile. And so we would use a zero height and zero offset in that scenario. And the very last scenario, which is not not an ideal situation, but it does happen from time to time. Some people like to use one scope on multiple rifles. It's really hard to get, uh, when you do that, to get a return to zero. It can be really stressful. You really need to recheck that zero. But if you're using one scope on two rifles, um, you can zero one of those rifles and use zero height and zero offset on the second rifle in order to make up for that. So in that instance, let's say that this is a shared scope. We can just put um, this one is I would actually mark that one as let's say this is another 300 blackout. Um, I would put I'd put plus plus scope and this would identify to me. Um, just through some characterization that this one is the one where we need we're, we're off where there's an offset because uh, it's it wasn't zeroed for this rifle so those are really the four most common cases that I see for using zero height and zero offset that is how to use zero height and zero offset. Um, it's just a grid based system. You would find your point of impact and then measure it out uh, and then just put your plus three or, or minus plus three minus two for being over here, um, whatever it needs to be. Uh, so you can input that information. If you have any questions, as always, put them in the comments or send them to us. And please like and subscribe so that you can get these little short how-to videos and be the first to see them. Thank you, and I hope you have a great day.